Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Junaid Haq and I'm currently serving on the Board of Directors here at IAGD. On behalf of the Board of Directors and the Board of Trustees, I'd like to welcome you all to the expansion fundraising event. Of course, we would love to have you all here at the Masjid for this event, but due to the current pandemic situation, that is not possible. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring an end to this terrible disease so we can all get back to our normal routines and lives as soon as possible. As you all know, we're currently in the midst of our expansion project. Some of you that come to the Masjid regularly have had an opportunity to see the expansion site. We also encourage those of you that have not had an opportunity to come visit the Masjid to see some of the work that's been going on. Inshallah, we have a very good program set up for you this evening and it's very action packed, so we're gonna get right into it. I'd like to start, first of all, with the recitation of the glorious Quran. And to do that tonight, we have with us Hafiz Raza, who's an actual graduate of our own HIFS program here at IAGD. So without further ado, I'm going to have Raza recite from the glorious Quran. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Yaseen wal qur'anil hakim Innaka laminal mursaleen Ala siratim mustaqim Tanzeel al-Aziz al-Rahim Litunzir qawman ma uudhir abauhum fahum ghafilun Laqad haqq al-qawlu ala aktharihim fahum la yu'minun Inna ja'alna fi a'naqihim awlana fahiyya ila al-adhqani fahum muqmahun Waj'alna min bayni aydihim saddan wa min khalfihim saddan fa'arshaynahum فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ وَسَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ إِنَّمَا تُنذِرُ مَنِ اتَّبَعَ الذِّكْرَ وَخَشِيَ الرَّحْمَنَ بِالْغَيْبِ فَبَشِّرْهُ بِمَغْفِرَةٍ وَأَجْرٍ كَرِيمٍ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ أَحْصَيْنَاهُ فِي إِمَامٍ مُبِينٍ Jazakallah khair Raza, that was beautiful. Now inshallah moving along to the next phase of the program, I would like to invite the chairman of the board of trustees, Dr. Sayyid Akbar, to say a few words and give a statement to the community. That will immediately be followed by a statement from the president of the IGD Board of Directors, Majid Bhatti. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Majid Bhatti and I'm currently serving as president of IGD. I hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps us all safe and healthy during this global pandemic. I mean, as you all know well, IAGD is in the midst of an ambitious expansion project 
with the express aim of turning IAGD into a major Islamic center to serve the needs of the Metro Detroit Muslim community for generations to come, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, all, after almost four years of continuous work at the site, the exterior building work is completed. The minarets are up and the beautiful domes are ready to be installed in the next few days. We are now ready to direct our full attention to the interior of the building and get it ready for occupancy as soon as possible. For that to happen quickly, we need your generous donations, hence this virtual fundraising event tonight. Please donate generously to complete the interior work and open this beautiful house of Allah to serve us all. No donation is too small or too big. Please donate whatever you can, but do participate. This will be a Sadkai Jariya for all of us long after we have left this world. Very briefly, rough plumbing is all done. Ex uh, electrical contractor is almost done with the required rough electrical work. HVAC contractor has started installation of heating and cooling ducts through the wall framing. I close by praying again to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the health and safety of our wonderful community and for his divine help in the completion of this expansion project. Please donate generously. Thank you and Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those who don't know me, I am Sayyid Akbar, a founding member of IAGD, currently serving as the chairman of the Board of Trustees. On behalf of uh, the Board of Trustees and IAGD, it is my honor to greet each and every one of you and to invite you to participate in the fundraising event for the new masjid. Inshallah. When we started this organization, we had a vision to develop a center that was comprehensive, that could provide for the needs of the members and the coming generations. And now, with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are in the midst of constructing the new masjid. Inshallah, this project will be done at an appointed time that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. We mere mortals cannot accomplish this by ourselves. It is the sublime help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will enable us to complete this project and hopefully it will be done sooner than later. We are confident that we will get generous donations from each and every one of us as we have done in the past. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his choicest blessings on all of us and the people who have been working hard on the project and also the Muslim community at large. Jazakallahu khair. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. President and Dr. Akbar for your words and insight. We'll be now transitioning to showing you a video that's been put together here at IGD by our media team. That will immediately be followed by a virtual tour that will be offered by Dr. Mullick the chairman of the expansion committee, and he will be doing a walkthrough of some of the details of the interior of the expansion site. Maulana, ya Maulana, ya Samaduana, Maulana, ya Maulana, ya Samaduana. You're the only one I turn to Lord, I know your promise is true 
every step I take, God, I'll be Prayer brings me right to you Every night and all my prayers Lord, I raise my hands to you Rob, you know what's in my heart Keep me on this path to you You forgive all those who seek you Who do I call if it's not you? Pray one day I'll meet you, Rabbi. Won't you bring me back to you? Maulana, ya Maulana, ya Samaduana. Maulana, ya Maulana, ya Samaduana. Maulana, ya Maulana, ya Samaduana. Maulana ya Maulana Ya Samir Du'ana I know life won't last forever Lord, I raise my hands to you Rabbi, keep me firm on this path Pray you bring me right to you You forgive all those who seek you who do I call if it's not you? Pray one day I'll meet you, Rabbi. Won't you bring me back to you? Maulana, ya Maulana, ya Samir Du'ana. 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 As-salamu alaykum. Uh, thanks for the participation. This is Dr. Ghaus Malik. We are going to give you a little glimpse of our uh, expansion project. We are standing here on the south entrance, which opens towards the parking area. Uh, as you can see, the entrance is a covered entrance uh, with three arches going into double door into the main lobby and give you a mini tour of the expansion as it is happening right now. Well, we are here in the main lobby uh, it has two entrances, one towards Avon Road, the other one back towards the parking area. Both are very symmetrical, covered entrances with arches. It, the lobby itself is about 3,800 square feet, and the main emphasis has been good flow of traffic with areas of decompression. Uh, in the center is the uh, main dome, which is about 25 feet uh, diameter. We can then go to the uh, main uh, prayer area. We are currently at the entrance of the uh, men's prayer area. This entrance is from the main lobby with the three separate entrances. The main prayer area is 8,500 square feet, which should accommodate at least about 1,200 people at one time. The Merab area is uh, two-story with a smaller dome in front of it. That should also be visible from upstairs. We will now move on to the women prayer area. The women prayer area, this is on the second floor. It is uh, 5,500 square feet, which should accommodate about at least 600 uh, women for the prayer. It obviously opens on the main Merab area, which is, uh, as mentioned before, is two-story with a dome. There is going to be a, uh, a glass barrier in a U-shaped fashion, which would be 72 inches high, so that there would be uh, communication, but there would be a, a glass barrier. We can then uh, look at the mini lobby for the women's prayer area. So we are uh, actually now looking into the uh, entrance to the women area which is surrounded by a mini lobby and closed just for the, for the women, which would have a glass partitions towards the uh, main lobby. 
this mini lobby mainly goes into the uh, set of stairs on this side which are wider those would be just designated for the women so they could come through those stairs plus there would be a separate door from the outside to enter into that that area and they would uh, the wuzu area and the main prayer area would be on the back side we can then now look at the uh, other side of the building which is primarily serving the educational pur purpose like a library looking uh, into the other side of the lobby on this floor on the first floor it was the reception area and entrance to the social hall and the hips program on this floor it's into the educational area the main central area is uh, designated for library it has office spaces it also has meeting rooms and uh, our media uh, production area assalamu alaikum uh, thanks for the participation Thank you to Dr. Malik and to our media team for putting that video together. It is now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you our keynote speaker for this evening, Dr. Yasser Qadi. It goes without saying Dr. Qadi is somebody that requires no introduction. He's one of the most well-known speakers, not only here in the United States, but all around the world. Dr. Qadi completed his bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Houston. He then went on to attend the University of Medina, where he completed his second bachelor's degree specializing in Hadith studies. He also completed an MA in Islamic theology from the College of Dawah. He then returned to the United States and completed his PhD at Yale University. Dr. Qadi currently serves as the Dean of Academic Affairs at the Islamic Seminary of America and also serves as a resident scholar at the East Plano Islamic Center in the greater Dallas area. It is with distinct honor that I would like to introduce to you all Dr. Yasser Khadi to our program this evening and welcome him to IAGD. Dr. Khadi, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu and welcome to IAGD. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa ala ba'd. So alhamdulillah, it's a great uh, pleasure to be speaking to uh, all of you uh, online, mashallah, tabarakallah. Uh, and uh, of course, we are now at a very critical time in this uh, pandemic. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. The good news is that uh, we're hearing uh, that uh, the uh, the vaccine has already been approved, as we know. So alhamdulillah, inshallah ta'ala, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. And inshallah ta'ala, we hope that this time frame is going to come to an end. In my talk today, what I wanted to do, inshallah, is share um, basically two basic uh, thoughts or two mini talks back to back, and they are actually related. Uh, the first of them is that we really do need to think about this entire uh, 11 months that we have undergone and draw lessons from it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran that the believer understands the wisdoms and the believer derives benefit from anything that happens so for example Allah says in the Quran that uh, we should read the histories of old and we should study the stories of the people before us why because Allah says that in that in this are wisdoms and lessons for people of intelligence so Allah is saying look to the past and derive lessons and derive wisdoms from this we learn that the believer understands and comprehends and extracts wisdoms we we benefit from experience and we have to ask ourselves a very difficult question how do we understand and what is the wisdom of this pandemic and how should we uh, realize the potential that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, cre has created us for given the circumstances are indeed so difficult but you need to have that faith-based community as well. And that is why we come to the importance of uh, you know, building these types of masajid. Alhamdulillah, I'm well aware that your masjid is 
one of the largest potentially inshallah will be and also one of the oldest in one of the most historic places and cities in North America you truly have a lot to be humbly proud of humbly proud of it's allowed to be proud if you're humble it's allowed to be by pride here I mean to thank Allah for the blessings that Allah has given you, right? It's allowed to be appreciative of the blessings Allah has given you. And your community is a historic community. It is in what is called the Arab and Muslim capital, you know, uh, of uh, of North America. Uh, you know, Detroit is where a uh, hundred years ago, more than a hundred years ago, the largest group of Muslims, you know, came and settled. By the way, footnote here, again, much to learn from that batch. Alhamdulillah, some of them are still practicing and praying, but many of their descendants, many have lost the way. And one of the reasons why is that they did not preserve their faith via institutions of learning and institutions of scholarship and institutions of worship. They did not build these types of family life centers that you are building here right now. That is one of the things that definitely we can learn from uh, the mistakes of the, uh, of the past. Now, this is why, dear brothers and sisters, it is so important that we understand that when we are raising funds for our own community center, for our own masjid, for our own children, that in reality, this isn't just a fundraiser for a better carpet. It's not just a fundraiser for better parking. It's not just a fundraiser that, okay, in Tarawiyah, I'll have space to go and pray easily and there's good air conditioning. No, that's all secondary. No exaggeration, dear brother and sister. These types of fundraisers are literally to preserve the iman of your children and grandchildren after you. You need to think beyond just a prayer space. You need to think beyond just a place to park your car during tarawih and then go inside and pray with plenty of air conditioning, the beautiful chandelier. That's all a part of it. But far more important, far more important is a place where your children can regularly go. And I was very happy to hear that, alhamdulillah, you have built a, a very a large gymnasium and you have a, a, a center there that you know people can come in and be with. That's very important because our masjids cannot just be open up for Jumu'ah and then shut down, open up for the salawat and shut down. Our masjids have to be microcosms of lived Islam. That means civilizational Islam. That means our children have to go and literally want to play in the masjid. They should have cafes. They should have interaction with everybody. There should be friendliness so that people can see what is Islam. That is one of the best ways that checks and balances, that iman is established in the heart. When a person grows up surrounded by people of faith, then faith is automatically absorbed in their own lives. And that's why, dear Muslims, my time is almost up. I have to wind down now. But I want to just finish off with this point that, you know, a person like myself, I travel the country. I have been to, I don't know, 500 masajid. I mean, so many states and across the globe and whatnot. And I'll tell you one thing. To, and I, it might sound depressing, but I'm going to flip it around. Every single community I go to, without exception, is struggling for their fundraisers financially. Every community has is having a project it is raising funds for. If it's not the parking lot, it is the reconstruction of the musalla. If it's not that, it's to build the gymnasium. If it's not that, it's to phase two or phase three or this land or whatnot. Every single community in North America is having issues financially, wanting to do something bigger, doing this and that, and fundraisers are happening across the land. Now, is that a negative? Well, a little bit. I look at it the exact opposite way. I look at it going back to the statistic I began on, and that is that more Muslims go to the masjid in England than Anglicans go to church on Sundays. The reality is that other faith communities are having exact opposite problems. Their problems are they have too much space, a lot of them. Their problems are people are not coming to their places of worship. We have the exact opposite. I thank Allah that we have parking problems in almost every single masjid in North America. It's a positive problem to have. We'd rather have the people come than no cars. We'd rather have the packed community halls than emptiness. So I thank Allah. So rather than look at it as a negative, this is a positive and a blessing in disguise. And you know, I know it gets a little bit frustrating that there's one fundraiser after another fundraiser after another fundraiser. But you know what, dear brothers and sisters, this is exactly what life is about, helping where the causes are needed. That's why we're here we have to understand this fundraiser you might consider it to be a bit of a chore a bit of a burden i'm taking a step back and i'm looking at the nation i'm looking at this beautiful country we live in and i'm seeing you know what 
your one community and the community next door and the states across you and all the way from Alaska to New York, from California, you know, to uh, the East Coast to the West Coast, communities are just popping up one after the other. And each one of them is struggling to plant that tree. But then I'm looking at the broader picture that those trees are becoming forests. And inshallah ta'ala, a time will come when this entire land is spotted with our own descendants and the people that have embraced this faith and they shall be in the tens of millions, hundreds of millions. And your one contribution of one tree, you might think it's only one tree. But when you take the step back, alhamdulillah, I can see the forest for the trees and you should do the same thing. Do not trivialize, dear Muslims, Muslims, the roles that you have here. Do not trivialize that you're only building one center. I kid you not, I cannot think of a more important sadaqah jariya than to preserve the Islam of your own children. These are your children. Your children. Nobody's going to come from another community and write a massive check for your masjid. You have to get over this. That was in the 80s when you had you know oil-rich countries come and send one of their princes and that's all gone. It's all gone. Nobody is going to go fundraise for your community other than you. It's your community. It's your children. Every community is raising funds for its own masjid. And I say that's a good problem to have, alhamdulillah. So step up to the plate, dear Muslims. Step up to the plate. It is your community. It is your faith center. This is where your grandchildren, inshallah ta'ala, will be playing around and going to the community. There is no greater sadaqa jariya than to invest in your own children. And this is... Number two, again, I'm going to be honest. Number one is your own family. You don't need to invest in that money-wise. You need to invest time and iman. But number two, the next important thing is that your children see the community of Islam. And that's what these fundraisers are about, to preserve and protect Islamic civilizations, microcosms. You know, we're living in a sea of rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to preserve an oasis. I should say a desert, right? We should have an oasis now where our children can see the beauty of our faith manifested amongst many people. And they can understand and realize that this religion is a religion that is a lived experience. And they to see, need to see it one-on-one. -on -one. And that is why, dear Muslims, I encourage all of you to give, especially for a center as historic as yours, as massive as yours. You guys have the potential to be one of the most important masajid in all of North America. You have the history. You have the city, you have the uh, infrastructure around you, you have the land Alhamdulillah, you have a lot of things going for you, obviously there's always room for improvements, I mean uh, I know, you know, you had a, 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 an imam or a sheikh a few a decade ago that I'm familiar with, but it's time for you to now, you know, see if you can get somebody else as well that is going to be appealing to the youth. Make sure that your youth can connect to a, a figure as well. And again, I have to be honest here, as you invest in the buildings, also invest in the personnel. As you invest in the structures, that's very important. Make sure you, you, you also invest in the dynamic uh, youth directors and in the resident scholars and in the imams uh, that are going to be inshallah able to carry this message uh, to the youth of the next generation that too is important but one step at a time one thing at a time today we're here for this beautiful fundraiser and let me conclude by stating uh, very simply dear brothers and sisters that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that when a person passes away as you know everything comes to an end except uh, three things Number one is sadaqa jariya. Number two is knowledge that people benefit from. And number three is children that make dua for you. Okay, with this hadith we conclude. With this I conclude. What other project is there where all three of these are combined into the same project than to build a family life center for your own children? This is sadaqa jariya. This is knowledge that will be benefited from because you're going to have Quran and dhikr and durus taking place here. And this is your children making dua for you. So you get three with one, not kill two birds. You get three with one, right? So you're going to be able to get all three of them, inshallah ta'ala, by donating to a project as uh, important as this. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses all of you. And I pray that Allah continues to give me and you more so that we can continue to be even more generous. And inshallah, make you a promise, inshallah ta'ala, that as soon as COVID finishes, inshallah ta'ala, reach out to me and I will try my best, inshallah ta'ala, to come in person uh, to your community and to interact with all of you because I've heard a lot about your masjid and uh, it is long overdue that uh, a visit is long overdue. So I pray that inshallah ta'ala, everything comes back to normalcy. And we're able to come and interact together. And with that, Jazakumullahu Khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
ما شاء الله تكبير 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 We are really thankful to Dr. Yasir Qadi for his excellent speech and he motivated us and all the community also too. May Allah give him a reward for his hard work and for his dedication for the cause of Islam. I really thankful to him from, from deep of my heart, being a chairman of the fundraising committee and from whole community of IAGD, we are really thankful to him for giving and providing the need for these kind of centers. May Allah Ta'ala subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his blessing on him, his parents, his family, and his teachers. Jazakallah khair, Dr. Qadi. Inshallah, as you mentioned, that you never saw this center before, we, like, we will invite you, inshallah, and then you will come, and then we'll give you tour also, too. And I have to talk to you separately about a few other things, too. So again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Dr. Yasir Qadi. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Now, as uh, our program is going on, and I really humbly request Assalamu alaikum to each and every person who are right now watching and uh, seeing our program. It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are doing this program. As I mentioned again and again and again, this project is going on. And this project is for us and for our family and our future generation. As you know that our elders established this center in 1978 and the first construction was built in, in 1982. And the second part of the construction was 2003. And uh, this is, we are doing this final part of that one to have a place for the prayer for the men and for the ladies and other activities also too. Right now what we are going to do is, I'm going to invite my good friend, my brother, Brother Shahid Ahmed. He's going to come for the, say if you uh, say, and also he will do the trivia questions for all of you. So then you can get some uh, answers and then you will get some reward for that one also too. So we further do, Dr. Shahid, uh, Brother Shahid Ahmed, please come. Also want to, inshallah, you know, extend our thanks and gratitude and jazakallah to the entire community that has supported IGD not just during this tough time, but for the past several decades, and humble everybody continues to do so. And thank you for all the ones that are blessed to join the event this evening. We could not do it in person, but inshallah, hopefully next time it will be in person. And I think everybody has reflected on things that have gone through with this pandemic. And you know, like I tell my wife and my family at home, the one thing that came out of this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had all of us locked down with the people closest to us. So I think all of us need to appreciate that and all of us need to acknowledge the people that are closest to us and that's where IGD and this community comes in. And we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have each and every one of you be a part of this community and, and have been a part and inshallah more members to come. Being one of the biggest centers in this country that is being recognized by everybody throughout not just the country but even internationally people are asking about this this institution and inshallah where we're going. So we really need you to donate because unfortunately without fundraisers uh, we don't have people just walking in every day off the street and writing big checks. So we need events like this, we need reminders like this, and we need invitations like this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can really dig deep down and support our cause as much as we can. And for those that are unable to do it, inshallah, you will have more opportunities in the future. And the one thing we need to remember is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always take care of this place more than any of us put together. And inshallah, the funds and the people and the community and the work will always come and it will continue to get bigger and better. You know, humble having all five of our kids go through this facility, and when I see my little ones that are excited and ecstatic to go to work, to all the teachers that have been working effortlessly, just the amount of effort, the amount of work that's gone behind keeping these kids in school, and the way Noor Academy continues to provide that nutrition for these kids from not just from an educational perspective, but their entire personality, is something that is beyond any kind of gratitude that we can uh, we can you know offer or remind all ourselves of. 
The amount of work that Hafiz Rabbani has done for this facility since the day he came here is something that we can never forget. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give him much longer, healthier life. And inshallah, he's going to be with us forever and ever as long as uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills it. And inshallah, we look forward to that. And having his presence in the new expand expanded area is going to be a dream come true for a lot of us. So tonight is a big night. It may not be an odd night. It may not be Ramadan. It may not be one of the holy months. But every month is a holy month. Every night is a holy night. And we hope that, inshallah, everybody is able to donate as much as they can, not just for the completion for this project, like Usman uncle has mentioned, like Akbar uncle has mentioned, everything that's happened, like Majid Bai has mentioned about the work that's happened. But going forward, to continue managing this place, which, inshallah, will be managed. We're not worried about it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bigger than all of us. And inshallah, it will be managed better than we can all plan for. And again, it's an invitation for all of us to be a part of this and going on for everyone else to be a part of this. So please reach out to your friends, your neighbors, people that are in Michigan, outside the state, in, a, in the same country, outside, overseas. And whatever they can donate would be highly appreciated, obviously, by us. And inshallah, the amount of ajr that you'll get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more than what you and I know. Jazakallah khair again to everybody. Thank you so much for your time and enjoy the rest of the evening. Usman Akhla, I'll hand it back to you. Jazakallah, my son Hussein, I really appreciate, okay? And I can see our youngsters are doing an excellent job. And I'm very helpful, I'm very happy and optimistic that inshallah our new generation will take us to the next, next level. With, the, with further ado, now I would like to, before I mention about that uh, inviting our speaker, as Hussein mentioned, this work which we, are, which we are doing right now, there are a lot of hours and hours spent for this uh, project, this, uh, this, uh, this program. And I really, from deep of my heart, thankful to all the volunteers of the fundraising committee and the board of directors, board of trustees, and so many other volunteers who work for this program. Especially thanks to my daughters who work day and night, okay, for this uh, program. And thanks to all my daughters, Arfa and everyone. Thank you very much and Jazakallah Khair. Also, our youth, both girls, and the boys. And also, I'm thankful to the youth leader, Sumaya. I know Sumaya who Sumaya is. Sumaya Master and uh, Ali Ahmed. Thank you. And the uh, youth are calling the phone right now. And please accept their phone call and answer them in a positive way. But now I'm going to introduce our speaker for the fundraising, Dr. Yusuf Abdullah. He is a co-founder of Islamic School of New Jersey. He is a national fundraiser of Betul Mal. And also he is CEO of Al Safa Consultant. Dr. Brother Abdullah is a great leader. He did his bachelor in accounting, and then he dedicated his life for the cause of Allah, and to dedicate his life for the people all over the world. He travels all over the world, and I can tell you, when I call him other day, I don't know where he was. I, both of he and myself spent one hour talking about our plan, and I gave the history of IGD also too. And I didn't know that he was in Africa. So he was, he flew from Kenya to Somalia. And then he came to California. And he came from California to Detroit. His flight arrived at 2.30. And I told him that I can come and pick you up. He said, no, Brother Usman, this is my duty. And I love this one, okay. So he came over here in this area in the hotel, I said, we can provide some accommodation to you. And then after that, he said, no, everything's all set. I will come by myself. And he was here at 5 o'clock. So 
the reason we invited him, he is a great uh, scholar and also he is a great motivator to touch the heart so that way the wallet can be easily open. So with further ado, Dr. Yusuf Abdullah. I'm going to try this in your seats. It's going to hand it. It's going to hold me. Right? MashaAllah. Bakur Kabira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much, everyone, taking part in this big night. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you and your children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help this community to raise the pious children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to build this masjid and to continue um, the, with this masjid. Alhamdulillah, we see the good result of, you know, like having strong institutions. And mashallah, you see the kids in the masjid and around the country from this masjid. This is only the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the dedication and the sincerity of the founders of this masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in their life Amen. and their family's life. Amen. And whoever left this world, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all their sins and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them jannatul firdaus. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to eliminate the pandemic from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless, to bless this masjid Amen. and to bless this expansion and to help us to continue growing and growing in establishment in teaching the Quran and teaching the Arabic in teaching the deen. Ya Allah, Amen. Ya Allah, guide Amen. us Amen. to, what's be, to what, uh, what is better for us, Amen. to what is best for us. Amen. Ya Allah, Amen. Accept us among the righteous. Ya Amen. Allah, accept us among the righteous. Amen. Ya Allah, protect us, protect our children, to protect our uh, wives. Ya Allah, hafadna wa hafad azwajana wa abnaana bima tahfadu bihi ibadaka salihin. And we say what Ibrahim and Ismail said, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'u al-alim. Ya arhamar rahimina, ya Allah. Barakallahu feekum, jazakumullah khair. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله مولانا يا مولانا يا سمع دعانا مولانا يا مولانا يا سمع دعانا You're the only one I do you ربي you know what's in my heart Keep me on this path to you You forgive all